Hey. How are you today? Can I ask you something? How come on elevators people are so weird? I mean, nobody wants to talk or be touched, and rightfully so, but here we are in this confined space, possibly going to the same location. So, I mean, the least we could do is get to know each other. What happened to common courtesies or just humans, period? You know, we always hear about the elevator pitch, and it makes us treat elevators like it's this thing that happens we're meant to forget about. But the truth of the matter is, elevators aren't that fast. These rides can be really long. It's like for this small moment in time, we're in a different world. Or we're not where we're starting, and we're not where we're supposed to be. We're just in between. I guess that's why people are so weird on elevators, because we, we don't know what to do here. I mean, the stairs, obviously, the objective is to climb the stairs, but on an elevator, we just stand and wait. But what if that's the point, to just stand and observe? The truth of the matter is, we don't know what's waiting for us behind these doors, and something that you tell me about yourself could prompt me to save your life. Just a thought. This is, this is me. And you may find yourself living in a shotgun shack. And you may find yourself in another part of the world. And you may find yourself behind the wheel of a large automobile. And you may find yourself in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife. And you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? Letting the day. A strange, a strange after. Oh, what can I do for you this time? <laughs> you want more? What gives you the right to want more time? Why do you deserve it? What makes you think you should get more time than all of those who went too soon? Do you understand what time is to the universe? Look, I know human beings have always tried to divide time, the enormous complement, into little fractured pieces, like seconds, minutes, hours, Days, weeks, months, all of these are actually a whole. And your lives are very little parts of it. But the perception of time also depends on the being. You see, my perception of, say, 10 years will be different than yours. And yours will be different than, say, a rabbit's. Oh, don't look at me like that. Here. Well, I thought about it last night as I tried to rest. Maybe a bit more sentiment. You see, every moment happens at the same time it dies. Meaning, when a moment happens, you will never ever get that exact moment again. Oh, he was and that makes everything scary now all of a sudden, doesn't it? You see, every moment is the first of what's left of life. Every breath you take, the less it gets. You all walk, slowly or fast, towards your death, the end of your days. And it all happens, even out of my control. So, humans like yourself, 
must ask the question. Is life long enough to do everything I wish to do? Is it long enough to waste doing things I do not enjoy doing, nor would help me in the future, as I get closer to either the ground or the sky? Ask yourself, am I aware of the fact that I am dying right now? Right at this moment. Is this the moment you want to live before you go? Before it's gone? Look, I do like you. But think about that next time before you come squabbling to me about wanting more time. I remember when I was just five years old, my father loaded me into the back of his Ford and drove into the night. We were heading south of Kiowa Creek, where the chokeberries gouge the purpled sky and the starlight runs across our Ford's hood. My father stopped at a loading dock. He was picking up an extra shift, I guess. I walked along the pipe rack, dragging a stick across the ends to make a kind of music just for me. Along the barbed wire fences, Blocking the paths from the water, I saw skeletons of weeds matted into the mud-hollowed road. It was just me and the fossils preserved by time. Fossils of rock, dirt, metal, thousands of years old. In this moment of stillness, just south of Kiowa Creek, I saw the mysterium of time. I mean, to the degree a five-year-old can... This road stood as a capsule of what used to be, now hidden from view. What used to be a lively greenhouse in nature was now dried up. I was only a child, but I thought of time in its passing, of death. But I didn't think it could touch us. I thought we were invincible, immune. I would have never imagined death could take him. It was like one moment he was driving me around under the star-punched sky and the next I was sending out funeral invites. <laughs> How do I preserve him like those fossils just south of Kiowa Creek? Will he become just a distant memory like the purpled sky of the starlight? He deserves so much more than that. He deserves to be buried with jewels and gold surrounded by hundreds of loved ones. Instead, he gets a whispered service to a bunch of empty pews. How do I keep him from becoming a skeleton in the ground? Just a gravestone collecting dust, a lowly roustabout in the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> How do I keep him in my memory? How do I keep him alive? God, help me keep him alive. Every day like clockwork, five o'clock on the dot and up they go. I never see them come back down, but they go up every day without fail. Like that one time when I was seven and I accidentally let go of my balloon in the park. They've always been there, but I don't know any of them really. I don't know if anyone does, if, if they can see them. When I was little, I would point them out to my mom but I don't anymore. At first I thought she could see them too, but then she'd start to tell me they weren't real, like imaginary friends. That can't be true. Why are they still here? I thought you were supposed to lose your imaginary friends when you got older. 
now I just sit at my window and watch them. <laughs> I wait. I set an alarm. I wonder every day if this is the last time I'll see them. If maybe today I've passed that arbitrary threshold that blinds most adults, but that day hasn't come. And they float up in their hats and coats. Every day a man with a green tie passes my window. He seems kind. He has a friendly face. He's looking at me, but not quite. I wonder what he sees. Every day I wave to him, hoping he'll respond, and every day his hands stay still, and he's gone with the rest of them. I thought I saw him smile once, but it's sort of like staring at a painting for too long. I'd say we're still friends, the man with the green tie and I. I wonder what his life is like. I want to reach out and grab his hand, ask him where he's going or what it looks like up there. Or maybe if I could come with. If I held his hand, would it even stay solid? Without him, my time at the window would feel empty. I'd miss the few moments of my day where the sky fills up like a busy street outside a fancy office building at the end of a long work day. So, for now, I'll be in here. And the man with the green tie will be out there. And maybe... One of these days, he'll see me and finally wave back. my house and I know you don't live here so you have to leave um it's almost time for my nap and my mom will be really mad at me if I'm not in bed matter of fact what about your mom and your nap hmm I'm not seeing any movement towards that door you just came out of Did you put that door there? Wow, that's so cool. You don't have to be scared of me. You can talk to me. We can take turns. My name is Anna and I am seven years old. So, now it's your turn. Oh, come on. What if I told you a big, big secret and then you answer my questions? Yay! <laughs> okay. Once 
I stole five dollars from my sister without asking. But you cannot tell anyone that. You have to swear to it. Good. So now it's your turn. Can you show me? Do you have a name? <laughs> well, it is very nice to meet you, Mr. Sunny. Do you need help getting home? I can carry you if you want. My mom says I'm very strong. Margaret, meet my new... Margaret, don't you dare. Margaret, I will hate you forever. Margaret, I will, I'll give you $10. I'll do your chores for the rest of the month. Margaret, Margaret. Hang on, Sonny. It'll be okay. You just hang on. I walk through a crunchy part of the forest floor just letting my feet take me wherever they want to go. I need to be alone. It's been hard for me lately, not really knowing where to go or who to turn to. As I walk deeper into the woods, I'm getting lightheaded and heavy. I almost fall over until I'm suddenly swept off my feet. I look around, startled, but no one was there. It's just me being lifted up into the sky. I'm floating in the air, thousands of feet above the ground. All around me is black. Black that fades into an ombre of mountainous landscapes. I feel panicked, but my body is relaxed. My state of mind is just blank. I, I don't know what to think. There's a harmony of droning sounds filling the air in my mind. I look down and see how frighteningly high I am from the ground but my mind reacts to it as if there's nothing to worry about. Like, I'm supposed to be here. The darkness goes on forever above me. It engulfs me, but I can still see the beautiful mountains below me. My body just keeps floating up until it slowly comes to a halt. I'm not really going anywhere now, I'm just floating in place. A soft blue glow catches my attention out of the corner of my eye. The glow turns into a, a sparkle as it gets closer. There's a small breeze coming my way. Panic begins to fill my chest. It, it gets stronger as the sparkle gets closer until a huge gust of wind blows against me. I squeeze my eyes shut to avoid being blinded by this light. I then slowly open my eyes and see that I'm suddenly surrounded by a hue of blue stars amongst the dark black sky. The wind slows down and the stars take their places. They seem to be floating around me. I don't understand. Why me? Am I here for a reason? Are they trying to tell me something? I reach out to touch one, but it's just far enough that my fingertips can't reach it. I look up into the abyss and see the blue stars stretch miles upwards. They seem to go on forever. The panic dissipates in my chest and turns into a warm calmness. My eyes grow wide with curiosity as the stars get brighter and move around like ripples in water. And they're like curious kittens. The longer they are here, the closer they get to me. I reach out again and this time a small cluster of stars encircles my hand, continuously revolving around it. I don't want this to end. I feel like I belong here. I feel... safe. But the glow appears again, summoning the stars back to it. And within a blink of an eye, the stars disappear and I slowly descend from the darkness, down to the landscape below me.
Hey. Still there, I see. You're very... punctual. I'm glad it's clearer today. At least it's not as bad as yesterday, but... I guess you don't mind, do you? How was your day? I had eggs for breakfast. I mean, I ran out of milk, so it's not like I could make much else. Oh! <laughs> Tommy almost fell in the lake on the way to class. We stopped for coffee this morning since his friend was working, and there was ice everywhere, and his coffee spilled all over him, but I... I like your tie. I know I've told you already, but I thought I'd tell you again, just in case you could hear me this time. Why do I do this? Can you even hear me? Look at me. Just once. Just so I know you're real. I don't want to be crazy. I really, really don't. I just want to talk to you. Are you okay? Where are you going? Why can I see you? Why can't anyone else? Are you even real? Just please. Come back, please, I'm sorry, just come back, please. You came back. How the hell did I used to do this? How did I do this daily? How did the words come to me so easily? It flowed from me like a river. Thousands upon thousands of words, all in one place. How did I do that? How did the words fall out, one by one, pouring to one idea. Why can't I do that now? What am I missing this time? Is it 
the heart? Is it the passion? Is it the innocence? I want it back. Because now, now there's only silence. Our strangest interlude has been not knowing where we stand. I don't know whether I can or cannot reach out to you. It feels very much in between, but I'm scared of what comes next. And I want to avoid the next without trapping myself in this gray area that we're stuck in. I'm mad at you for putting us here, but then I'm mad at myself for blaming you. You told me that there was no one else you wanted to do this with, and now you're uncertain. Uncertain of where you stand. Uncertain of where that leaves me. You told me that what we have had was or, or is a blessing. That we're so lucky to have found each other so young. That clearly did not age well. So now here we are, in our own interlude, or intersection, intermission, maybe, but I guess that depends on what happens next. And since you don't know, I'm going to make it up for myself, whether it becomes a reality or not. I'll always know that at least this is what could have been, because I see us growing old together building an empire together, pushing each other to be our very best selves. I see us in the painting of the elderly couple with their dog watching the sunset. They, they've they gone through all of the... <laughs> see, normally right now, I'd call you and I'd ask you what's a synonym for ups and downs, but since that's clearly not the case right now, this old couple has gone through literally all the ups and downs that life could have possibly thrown at them and they made it out and now every night they walk to the pier with their dog to watch the sunset i know we're young and that this may be ridiculous but i'm i'm choosing to believe this story instead of all the other stories i've made up in my head because they end much worse and at the end of the day i don't know what's gonna happen and neither do you and i think that's the scariest part of this very strange interlude that we're in But whether we make it out together or apart, I know that what we build will be strong enough to keep our love for each other alive. Again, I miss you. A lifetime every minute apart. Here I spend purgatory without you. Any time without you is no second worth spending. So now my limbo, an intermission, a bump in time. This gap where I miss your love is life. Your life. Time, I must wait. Wait, I shall. For you. Life is... The time between timelessness. The afterlife, or... <laughs> the before life. None are worth being in without you. So... May I wait. 
May I love, may I have faith and strength. Just because my life has been put to rest does not mean yours should as well. For no longer may I share my life with you. So, live yours. Here I shall stay forevermore. Heaven's bells ring, and you I shall ring. <laughs>